LGD and their star player Ame, the troubled child of China, are here to kick up some ruckus once again. This time, it's against good boy Carl and the C-Squad of T1. This, of course, the battle is going to determine who's going to get their seat into the grand finals and watch as a losing team descends in the fighting pit against evil geniuses. So, who's going to walk away with victory? Is it going to be a very good bad boy or is it going to be a good boy gone bad? As we get into our upper bracket finals, Kyle, what are you feeling? I'm feeling like we're about to see some pretty solid Dota 2 game. I'm just hyped. We get to this stage of the tournament approaching championship Sunday as we have midnight ticks ever closer. <laughs> we actually get the best of the best, the top teams, top three already is heard. PSG LGD so far just utterly dominant. This is a big test though for T1. They oh, have yes. yet to play a team from the group stage. Mm -hmm. So far beaten up on teams that already got to the playoffs yep. simply based on their regional performance. This is their true test and they've pretty much stuck to their guns. You know, the 23 Savage Medusa, mm -hmm. a lot of other players, a lot of panelists think this might be a dead hero. He's going to try to prove otherwise. And PSG LGD on pretty much their bread and butter. <laughs> Ton of mid game team fight. They've got the Wyvern Spectre combination. Oh, like their draft yeah. quite a bit, Cap. Got yep. a lot more natural tower pressure as well. It definitely feels like T1's draft is very fitting to T1 in that, as our draft panel has said, there is uh, definitely some signature heroes here. <laughs> Zephyr on the Tree and Protector, we're going to be seeing that one again. And uh, I love the fact that they were pointing out Carl and how he looks best on sort of these off lane style mid laners. It's funny because Cuckoo is perfect in that regard because he plays the off lane like he's a mid laner. Exactly. You know? yep. One of the few captains from the off lane as well. He's going to have to be both big with the plays and big with the brain. PSG LGD have been incredibly technical in the way that they've executed their drafts. Mm -hmm. They dissected Nigma's lineups and just straight up out strategize them hard in that first game and then the third with a couple of critical team fights but either way this mid matchup is definitely the one i'm going to watch i think bat before the nerfs was definitely a bit favored now i think it's more split less rack especially with the stick first you're just going to spam lightning stun yeah so we should be able to see him secure most of the cs we'll see whether or not he can get any denies on carl all right side lane matchups we've got the dragonite once again peering in the off lane that seems like a constant at this point this time backed up by a hoodwink yep. and that's going to be going up against uh, the dusa lion matchup why already doing a bit of pulling and leaving Faith Beyond to take a lot of damage yeah, while he's away. So guys. much so that he has to actually pop the Fairy Fire to make sure he stays alive. Yeah. Both teams banking on one of the concepts I like a lot right now, which is damage mitigation, mm -hmm. Spectre Dispersion, DK Blood, the Wyvern Cold Embrace. Meanwhile, T1, you've got Tree Armor, Timber Armor, and the Mana Shield of Medusa. So Team Fight Um is going to play a big role. Expect Solar Crests on both teams and probably some Holy Locks as well, specifically on the Tree and the Wyvern. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's definitely become a staple. It's funny, Jenkins and I were just talking about uh, what kind of things we're expecting to see nerfed. And uh, Holy Locket, Sanj, regen cool. items oh, yeah. in general just seem to be a big one. I mean, they're so good. AA is a top pick. Yeah. Right? That, AA, sure, his kit's pretty solid, but it's more that it removes these annoying heals as win conditions. Uh, mid lane, by the way, is brutal. Oh, my. Nothing to say. Yeah. 11 to 4 against a 2 and 0 Carl. I thought this was less favored. I did not think it was less dominant. Yeah, he's definitely taking it right now to Carl. That is the number one MMR in the world right now against number 123 from Carl. Of course, T1 does have the numbers to back it up thanks to 23 Savage. It's number four in MMR right now. It's a lot of MMR, Cap. It is a lot of numbers. Yeah, we shall see. Expect a more static landing phase. Um, forgot to mention as well, the DK Dragon Breath. That was mm -hmm. actually the biggest theme um, with the damage reduction. It's actually incredibly effective against Dedusa if you don't have a method of cleansing it off yourself. I think any time you can reduce DPS of spread damage carries, it's super mm -hmm. effective. And it now, seems like uh, the Spectre's faring pretty well here in this bottom lane. We saw this matchup uh, before. Spectre versus Timbersaw. I think it was Poyo Yo we were watching, right? As the Spectre was just able to seemingly have a nice 1v1 against the Timbersaw. Very little problems. Here, he still has the Hoodwink kind of hanging around, but that's just because there's not much else to do. Right now, mid lane doesn't need the help. 
I believe uh, Hoodwink as well has the highest win rate with over 10 games played in this mm -hmm. tournament so far, which is very odd when you think about it. But I think all of us were saying the hero was just not good. However, it's been primarily good teams playing it, notably EG. Yep. And here, of course, PSG LGD. Getting a little pull action here, just trying to deny the timber saw as much as they possibly can. But truthfully, oh. X picked up for White Mon. That was. Did he get level two just then? Uh, he might have gotten off a neutral creep dying. I wasn't actually. No. I don't think so. Got a lot of XP. I think they, he maybe just held the point. Yeah. Uh, typically, Lions will have the point and drain mana, but if he hadn't seen that, that was a. Bit of an interesting move there by oh, OTM managed, winning Wyvern. Uh, open up the easy cam too, just before the four minute spawn. So you can see both of these, uh, both of these safe lanes are dealing with an off laner that's hard to just keep out of experience range. And nice deny there from Shin Q on the water rune. So instead, they got to try and take advantage of creep pulling as much as possible. That's the only real thing they can do. Yeah, I, well, I say can't. that, but they're going to try lane here. How do you do anything to these offliners? <laughs> like, but same concept. Timber saw, armor stacks, and then of course, uh, just dragon blood mm -hmm. for the DK. You just can't kill. There they go. Going on to phase beyond, but no. yeah, they brought him low last time. That was before he had level two of dragon's blood. Mm -hmm. Much different kind of quest now. And bottom, it's not great for Ame, but until Cuckoo's level six, he can't really pressure him too hard. Uh, it's just it's just really annoying. Uh, I'm curious to see where will he go after this. Mm -hmm. It's tough to play into the Medusa lane, especially if there's a tree just camping it. So maybe they'll make a move with the first haunt. He should hit six first. <laughs> I like how that bushwhack does nothing but help him secure an yeah. easy camp CS. That that is the that. Like, the use of that mana to secure 20 gold and take 20 gold away from the Timber Saw, that's about as best as Jin Q is working with right now. I just, it's the new offlaners, right? They're just unkillable. They're just hanging out. Yeah. So why you typically see more of the lower farm priority heroes into mid or space makers like Matt Rider, because the side lanes just simply take too much farm. Ninja hit him with the double slow combo here, but now showing up with these, the Hoodwink. We're going on a Zephyr, the tanky dream protector, but that bounce of the Deuce's Snake is going to do a lot. Not quite enough to secure the first kill, but then again, it wasn't first blood, so it doesn't matter. Jin Q, another bushwhack, and he's going to secure a second one here, unless the fairy fire can save White Mon around the corner through the trees. Jin Q spots him for a moment, hits him once, hits him twice, and blocks him off with a tree. Nicely played with the acorn shot. Yeah, nice battling. Supports will trade. However, they did kill the enemy offlaner, so I'd say even in a two-for-one scenario, that's mostly even oh, Carl. Carl, he's got Lasso, and I think he may try and go for an extra kill here with his haste rune. Never mind, he's got to use his extra bit to try and finish off Jin Q with a bushwhack. He needs another hit, and that wasn't enough either. There was still a fairy fire left. Oh, that was lame indeed. Carl, he thought he had a guaranteed kill, maybe even a second one, but it's denied to him. Meanwhile, Zephyr in the mid lane trying to run down his brambles to stay away from nothing to say. Will apparently give up on the chase or maybe not know where this train protector is off to. It's a pretty value move, though. You get a whole Leshrac mana pool. Yeah, you might have to go back to base on the tree end, but that denies a lot of farm from nothing to say. That represents a lot of jungle camps he could have cleared. Yeah. Bottom, Ame, once again the Echo Saber build, having some trouble though. The three points in Dispersion, typically you see Max Dagger, but against Timber, you're literally just last hitting, so you mm. might as well mitigate as much damage as possible. I think the big difference in this game is just going to be Carl's rotations. He is on a kill-heavy core. He needs to make moves, open up space for the rest of his team, whereas nothing to say, his rotations are a lot easier. He can find a hero kill, or he can just farm stacks, or more importantly, get a couple extra points in Edict and go take towers. So, yeah. especially once the DK is six, which is just about to hit. There it is. Where do you, what do you know? Big push, yep. yeah. Less track, three points, Edict, mana boots, and nothing to say is going to force Savage out of lane, or perhaps threaten a kill here. You would be really careful on the Dusa. This is going to be hard for a Tree and Protector to deal with. You can deal with one, but not both as living armor is only going to do so much good here. Even pulling the creep wave off the tower is only going to help you so much. 
as uh, the assault on this tier one safe lane begins and T1, well, normally it would be the thing, okay, you just give up this tower, right? But with a train protector, you kind of want to fight as much as you can for every single tower you've got. Because Lesh is actually so good against tree for that reason, because mm -hmm. you don't whiddle towers. You oh, just they're going to try and them. go for it. Carl, he's going to show up okay. here. They got the brambles to be able to keep nothing to say back while they lasso up and finish off Faith Beyond. It may have gotten the tower, but it does cost Faith Beyond his life. Let's check in on bottom. Timbersaw and Spectre still just annoying each other. Yep. Dooku tanking everything. Has a hood. Ame holding onto a full wand. So neither one really going to die. You can see Ame is just kind of tanking through the chakra. I feel like there's something wrong with this. That Spectre can just stand in lane against Timbersaw and just the build. hits constantly. Max dispersion. He's yep. geared for it. Max dispersion plus an early wand. Tread boots as well are going to help you out a little bit more. Yeah. You have the benefit of the tower as well, doing the damage. If it was Timber, somehow, you know, in fact, I'm a little surprised, you know, if Cuckoo does this and just tanks the tower and right click Spectre, maybe an earlier attack. Orb of Venom or something to apply a little extra pressure. Yeah, it is a bit uh, weird. I believe that's what Curtis said was early Orb of Venom is the go to for Timber against Spectre because you hit her so much. Yeah. You kind of need that slowdown. Zephyr going to be caught out here. No tower to retreat to and no trees to hide away in. Zephyr, Popeye, nothing to say. Flesh is always one of my favorite answer to the tree. It used to be that you also burn through the armor. Yeah, the charges that were there. It's enough magic pressure that ignores it, that it's still valid, but it's more about the way it's played. You know, DK, you want a slow push tower. Left track in one edict can do 80% of a tier one's health. So mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to set up properly, puts a lot more pressure on preemptive rotations on the side of T1 if they want to defend their Radiant's structures. Bottom tower do you feel like there there is something, um, a Radiant bit of a scared. weird meta going on here where both Hoodwink and Train Protector, they have a similar mechanism that is very, very unique to them. They can play inside the trees on the mm -hmm. side lanes. And Jin Q, well, unfortunately, trees Dyer's won't really be a savior Sun against a timber saw. Yeah, but, you know, I think you're all right with this if you're Ame. You got nine minutes out of the landing phase. Yeah. I think that's all you were really going to be able to hope for. And he's just been pretty much chilling in the jungle since. Uh, question is, how do you look at the Medusa versus Spectre matchup? I think it's really about two waves that crash into each other. Which one okay. breaks? Um, if you have the Manta Diffusal on Spectre, you can get on top of 23. Things can get a little dicey, but Dusa farms much faster, especially at this phase of the game, to mm -hmm. max out Split Shot. She can also take Ancient Stacks. Spectre needs a lot more time and farms much slower. Oh so God. if I'm T1, probably thinking about making moves based off of Creep Push, eventually take the mid tower. But at a point, Savage should be able to rotate over Clear out some Ancients, that's a dead Wyvern most likely. Another pick off for Carl, just trying to use the lasso off cooldown pretty much. Oh, the Brace does little to stop the magic damage of the Batrider. Oh, what? Slightly off the mark there. And somehow it didn't manage to land in the AOE of that tree. Back to the bottom lane goes Ame. T1 though, they have the Lion. I think this hero has been incredibly valuable. Blade Mail up on Ame, there's the answer. Ha! Can't handle me now, Cuckoo. He skipped, he had the Echo queued up. He changed uh -huh. it around. And let's see Watch how this... It's just barely the AoE. You can see the little uh -huh. dust cloud. It just missed. That's the kind of AoE of the of where I can pull into the trees. It's an unfortunate miss, Joe. Wait a minute, Lion and Wyvern, to me, the two supports of the tournament. I think Shadow Demon would be up there, depending on if people pick it in the finals. Another dead Zephyr Tree. Um, different concepts, though. Wyvern is really nice when the BKB start to come out, and mm -hmm. just for AoE control. Lion, incredible burst, and game-winning lockdown at times, especially on heroes like Lesh. And you combine that with a Batrider, all the control T1 needs they've got, and theoretically, Tree can be very effective against Spectre. A good root will nullify the entire haunt duration. All illusions get locked down, and it's very nice with the Deuce to have that sort of area of control. Looks like they're going to try and punish this timber saw for once. Cuckoo, is he aware? It does seem like it anyway. Backing off for a bit. He's going to be a hard kill either way because of the fact he's got this Hood of Defiance. I believe a higher level timber chain. And I just noticed, you know, speaking about the tree armor as much as we have, Zephyr's skipped it. He has maxed out Nature's Grasp. Yeah, so I've more seen a about, couple of these. Yeah, playing with the Batrider and for 
disable so his timber can actually get full damage off. I think it's also the best way for Tree and Protector to be able to farm side lanes. True. Uh, if you can't actually defend your towers, like you were saying against Leshrac, you know, you want to be able to have that maxed out Bramble so you could just throw it out. It'll Radiance give a decent amount of CS, always pushing away. Yeah. He has been killed so many times trying to do that. So now he's going to try and join his team. Carl looking for that opening, but it's going to be able to find it instead. And Yul's a split earth and then a Dragon Tail stun. That's where he's going to find it's death. Cuckoo, Timber Chain through most of PSG LGD, but is unable to have enough damage to threaten anybody as uh, PSG LGD off of that initial pickoff with the Bat Rider, easily win the fight. Yeah, really nice move there. Um, fortunate for T1, they just got caught with Timber. I don't think you can take him down, but 23 Savage has no ultimates. You gotta be a little cautious. Yeah, mm. they look like they really wanted to poke at that mid tower, but they won't get the opportunity to do so. Yeah, but it closed that, but, uh, you know, that's why I'm here not in the finals, Cap, mm -hmm. because here I am wondering about a problem Tree's gonna have. He's already kind of dealt with it in advance, recognizing the situation. Uh, nothing to say. I like the item build. First off, he picked up a Fairy's Trinket, by far the best Lesh item in this spot, but he has Eternal Shroud queued up, which I'm a huge fan of. I dislike strongly. Oh, almost swipe the Arcane. Might this be a kill? Yeah, no, no, no. no it's not going to be That's a Timber Saw. Don't do that. We've seen that backfire before. Yeah, it's a Timber Saw that you don't have enough heroes around, right? You really want that kill? You're going to need probably the uh, Hoodwink here to get that extra bit of magic damage in. And so I'm a huge, so Eternal Shroud, if you're buying Hood on Lesh, it should become a Shroud immediately because okay. of the spell Lifesteal specifically, but sure. also because you get mana back. Instead of uh, the active's 50 and you can absorb 400 magic damage that becomes mana. And mm. Leshrac, your biggest issue in fights after the Hood isn't running out of health, but actually mana. So yeah. it's just so sick to run in. It's kind of deceptive as well. When suddenly Leshrac is gaining so much mana, you think because because the mana pool is basically Pulse Nova. And if yeah. that runs out, you're you're golden. Whereas, you know, much of the mana reduction on T1 can be negated by that. They have Mana Drain, they've got Mystic Snake. It's really annoying to play Lesh in these sorts of games. And Spell Lifesteal is super underrated. Meg picked up T1. Content, it seems, with the state of the game. After all, you said, well, this Medusa is going to farm faster. He's farming all the jungle all the time. Zephyr's nope. been able to play a bit of the side lanes. You could see Hoodwings trying to do the same up here. The White Mon, he placed a ward, de-warded the uh, high ground ward that Jin Q had earlier. White Mon knew part of this was here because they had a very deep ward. Oh, Faith Beyond, they're going to be able to find it because of their own ward deep in lane. They're going to be able to pick off the line pretty easily. A trap that was supposed to be originally to catch Jin Q. Then it goes to line, then it goes back to Jin Q, and then it turns into uh, a nice little play and move from the Dragonite. I just realized they have the Hoodwink just uh, for the break, right? Against yeah. Temper Saw and against Medusa. It removes the split shot. It does remove the split shot. Yes, it does. Slowing down the Bat Rider just enough, and because of the Blade Mail, even as he walks away, he's going to be taking more damage. Dragon Tail stun put onto the Medusa, but ultimately, between the Timber Saw and the Medusa, they are going to have some damage problems. So they take the Squishy Core instead. They're coming over to reveal that D ward they found earlier. So both of their Roshan wards are going to be, uh, or excuse me, Tinker wards are going to be denied. Now, PSG LGD would absolutely adore being able to take down this mid tower. Mm -hmm. And T1, they just want to defend it. Is under attack. We got a nice ward Dire up in the enemy jungle, but I think T1 are pretty content with the way this game has gone so far. They have no reason to not have faith in the 23 Savage Dusa, and he's halfway to a Scotty as we speak. Pretty big. Again, we keep talking about these HP regen mechanics. Yep. Very good to have the Scotty debuff on heroes that have high regen or spell lifesteal or have a wyvern on their team. Which is kind of all three of their cores. Even Spectre makes use of uh, regen to some extent because of how tanky she is. So certainly the live track in Dragonite will be feeling that burn a bit. Cuckoo playing a little bit loose here, trying to stay in front of this push, but not over committing. It looks like he's been caught anyway. But Wink Shot helps finish him off. They do manage to get the stun onto the last track, but nobody else can really follow this as uh, that would just be the Bat Rider, but he's currently being zoned out between the Wyvern and the Dragonite. Yeah, this is the big time we've seen on all these offlane DKs, the Blink Dagger. We've got a bunch of follow-up stuns as well, so this is suddenly PSG LGD's timing. They get the mid tower. <laughs> what an optimistic living armor that was. <laughs> Threw it onto the tower, one second later it's dead.
And I, I just love, I'm telling you, nothing to say. This guy is genius. Going now for the Kaya Sanj. Yeah. Status resist, HP regen, and life steal amp. And spell life steal amplification. A life steal. It's like this crazy regen style of build. And it's going to be really interesting to see if T1 has the damage and time to deal with this. They need the Scotty. Yeah. But I'm worried that they don't have enough sustained DPS. There's a lot of pressure on Cuckoo's Timber Saw here. He's going for just the straight up team fight items, you know, for his neck. Oh, they got him. Managed to get a blink, but a counter blink out from Faith Beyond. It's going to be able to hold the Man Rider in place. The Hoodwind shot goes out, but it's not quite enough. Carl will just barely live until the Hawk comes in. That finished him off. Meanwhile, the Winter's Curse kept 23 Savage from doing much there, but Ame has managed to clean up a couple of kills and is trying to get a third and does manage to get it in the Timber Saw. Zephyr chasing after a Dragonite, but he knows. His life is now forfeit. He's trying to run away, but Faith Beyond is saying, you're not going anywhere. Body blocking him to death and getting Ame four kills in one fight. I really want to see that replay again. Ame had the sickest blade mail, absorbed so much damage from Cuckoo. That's all pure. And just straight up slayed the Timbersaw with his own damage. Like, yeah, look at that. A Spectre with that much damage output in a fight like this is just This insane. early especially, yeah. damage the Timbersaw. Mm -hmm. Gets the four kills. Now Manta finished right into the Roche pit. Nothing to say got 100 to 0 Really great initiation from Tier 1. Like, yeah. they 100 to 0 would the Lashrak, but unfortunately he had the Nova going. So that's a little bit of extra sustain, some extra damage onto the Timber. And then Ame with the excellent positioning cleans up everybody. And off of that team fight, they grab the Manta. And with the Manta, they immediately get Roshan. Now they've got a Spectre with an Aegis at 19 minutes. That's pretty nasty. Yeah, it is Diffusal queued up. Drop of the tree, pulling him in. White Mon, chain stunned to death. Yep. 14 to 5 now as uh, LGD beginning to exert their control over the map as we're going to watch that replay again. Yep. Check watch Ame here. He's going to go right in. Cleans up Blade a couple out. of heroes. Blade mail. Ooh, so much damage. He just got great position. The trouble playing Lion in this sort of game, same with Bat, is that you're just going to get hopped on right away. And the initiation advantage also rests with uh, PSG LGD because they can just have a blink DK stun. It's going to refresh no time. Mm -hmm. That rider, very squishy, has a long CD on his catch. And as you can see in that fight, yeah, he got the Lesh, but was immediately stunned. And DK is ready to keep fighting. Double his HP. Yeah. You know, it's funny how Dragonite is such a simple hero, and yet I have been routinely impressed by some of the performances. Oh, Zephyr is going to be caught with a bushwhack in the trees. Jin-Q keeps vision of him as best as he can, so they get the additional slow out from Y, and good read from Jin-Q, nailing the sharpshooter shot. The 15 to 5 doesn't feel like PSG LGD have so many extra kills, but... Mm -hmm. It's just really T1's inability to Radiant's take tower fights on their terms. Attack. It's unfortunately just Carl. Like yeah. The only person. And it feels like he's moves. been mega countered, right? Yeah. Like his first big team fight move, he gets caught by Yules right away, chain stun death. Another pick off after that happens. Then he goes, he gets his blink dagger, tries to get some less rank, boom. Instantly countered by the blink dagger of Faith Beyond. It feels like this guy just cannot win. Blink for blink once again. Now he's been dragon tailed up. Oh, PSG LG, they're just working Carl in this game. Now Winter's Curse setting up some more kills with the bushwhack on top of that, nothing to say. Putting out some serious damage. Cuckoo trying to slide away, but they're gonna have to leave the Deuce behind perhaps. Okay, the Stone Gaze doing a decent amount of work here. Cuckoo comes back into play. And they are going to be able to bring down nothing to say. Ame, fully committed, does have the Aegis here. Wants to be able to get the kill on the 23 Savage first and does manage to do so. Even as he's lassoed up, he goes down now. It's up to Cuckoo and maybe White Mon to be able to get more damage in. But yeah, they're realizing they don't have anything left. They're going to try and back out. Faith Beyond, oh, not quite catching White Mon himself, but it does flush out that support. So the rest of his team can pick up the goose. 18 to 6 now. And PSG LGD using their Aegis. Just very nicely in a fight around T1's tier two. I just want to once again shout out nothing to say. Yes, he's the only member of his team to die in that fight, but look at the items. Shroud, Yules, Wand, Assange. He has itemized for exactly what he's done. When he died, he had no mana. He's just straight up <laughs> face diving. Yep. Big beyond with him. Now with a fresh BKB. It's the it's chillest game shot. for Ame because nobody's worried about him. He even mm -hmm. took the first Aegis. I think it was yesterday. Can't remember the team, but with a Lesh Inspector, they gave first Aegis ah, to Leshrac. This time, yeah. they keep it on Ame, which is, as you can see, the right move. And if you die as a Spectre with Aegis, it's 
pretty dope because the dispersion damage is now about as much as you can throw out. You come yeah. right back, full HP. A big part of that is his blade mail build because he's going such yeah. an active in your face style that they wanted that extra life on him. Yeah, it makes sense. Now he's closing in on a Scotty as a result of having yet to die. Seven zero and three for Ame. Are scanning. It's interesting that he's not going for the defusal. Would give him solo kill potential on both supports. Mm -hmm. But Scotty can make an argument is just a better item all around. You're dealing with some healing effects from the tree armor, I suppose. Yeah, deals with the timber saw a little bit better. I can I can kind of dig it. I mean, good against range heroes always, right? So I feel like didn't we see like this exact game from PSGLGD against Team Nigma where it was Miracle top Radiant's net worth top tower and then under attack. three PSGLGD cores. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't know T T1. They're not out of it. Like Deuce in the late game is a threat for sure. It's just the trouble they have starting Radiant fights. Like scanning. what is the move they're going to make? It, it all comes down to a lasso, and there's so many heroes. In fact, pretty much every hero on PSGLGD can interrupt it. I have to say, Zephyr and Carl just not getting to play Dota. No. Right? The Stream Protector has been caught so many times trying to go for the split push. And then Carl, as we talked about earlier, has just been countered every step of the way. Arcane Rude now for nothing to say. Kaya Sanj for the Chamber Sauce. So there's a slight upgrade for T1. They're going to need it too. Going to go back for the Aghanim Scepter as he gets the level 20 talent, which I like to be able to see. I think people have been kind of overly forsaking the Aghanims just because the, the talent change. Yeah, it's still one of the reasons I think you pick the hero. It just takes a little bit longer mm -hmm. before it's truly online. White Mon. Okay. They're going to turn back towards mid. PSGLG just obtaining control of the high ground. And obviously T1, they know they're up to something. Radiance middle tower. There's the Blink on the line. So finally, another tool to potentially start fights. The Treant also has one, but I think he's going to look to use that later in mm -hmm. the engagement. You want to make sure that the Spectre has at least used his Manta. And uh, you wouldn't mind if a couple BKBs get popped as well. It's really just for that slowing down of the fight. Do some Prospers if you can burn out a lot of these big cooldowns. The Less Track Mana Pool, the Curse, Haunt. If you can just live, everybody stays alive. Yeah. And that has been kind of bit of the problem, right? They were able to hold on to their tier one towers because Timbersan, Dusa would not die, but every single time it felt like maybe the train protector was getting caught, the Bat Rider wasn't surviving. We desperately need a uh, 23 Savage gonna be found. Not by himself, but a beautiful burst fight. Gonna be able to catch dudes. Zephyr's gonna be able to follow up. Bjork growth now. They've got the lasso onto the Dragonite. They're gonna focus every bit of tension they have to be able to kill Faith Beyond. But Ame does manage to clean up one support. And now they're gonna chase after 23 Savage. Bushwhack actually does manage to catch Zephyr. So he's gonna fall next. Nothing to say. Getting in front of 23 Savage. Making sure he knows he has to stand and fight. And this is a fight that's gonna be hard to win too. Another Bushwhack controlling up 23 Savage. Cuts the tree, but it's too late. He's dead. Timbersaw pulled back in by the Winter's Curse. That'll lead not just to the Timber's death, but the Bat Riders as well. Nothing to say. He's insane. Extra Voodoo Mask. I keep saying it, Ooh, but he keeps okay. buying more items <laughs> yeah. for Spell Lifesteal. Yeah. He's full health. Mm -hmm. He is full health in the fight. The no. ideal cold and praise target as well for his Wyvern, mm -hmm. because so long as he's cast his spells, he's still dealing near full damage in the middle of the fights, just running Dyer's at 23 Savage. Tower. Yes, they lose the DK, but consider Dyer's how many spells and how much time T1 have to spend to yeah. kill any of these PSG LGD cores. They're playing it away. Look how aggressive everybody is. Somebody Dyer's on the team might die, but the other two cores are right up in the mouth. The 23 Savage Medusa, who simply just doesn't have the damage yet. Look at the Colton Brace. Yeah, and look like, at what an easy game Y gets to play. I literally watched him just kind of chilling. Yeah. Waiting, waiting. Finally throws out the Winner's Curse. He sees a good opportunity to be able to catch them as they try and run away. And now, as a result of that fight, as we saw, Jin Q does have an Aghanim Scepter, so watch out for that Hunter's Boomerang. Oh my God. That's going to be able to increase the damage coming out from the Lesh Rack, as well as all the other magic damage. But... And, and a reduction in status resist. It's just mm -hmm. such great synergy, honestly. Like, man, these guys have been playing some incredible Dota, and, you know, hats off T1. They have gotten quite far in this tournament. Many. Uh, much further, rather, than many of the detractors would have said they would make it in the top three. Mm -hmm. But PSGLGD, I think, is uh, 
It's a different kind of team. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely agree with that. I think everybody kind of had, after the group stage, had them as uh, one of the grand finalists. And it's uh, looking like, at least for this game one, LGD is going to secure an early lead. 11,000 net worth. As you said, they keep on building more and more spell life still. Do you think this is a build you should always go on last track? Or do you think he's trying to take advantage of the fact that T1 is lacking in damage? It's just very long, drawn out damage mm -hmm. that's coming from T1. Ceremonial ropes. <laughs> um, I think it's a bit of both. I yep. think that this is sort of the, the best style, like you feel the best when you play this way, because you can just run forwards. I'm not gonna let them get anything here, not even the outpost. Dusa coming forward, they do have the overgrowth, plus the stone gaze. They're gonna be able to at least finish off the Winter Wyvern, but nothing to say. Saves himself a lot of grief with the Yule Scepter. He's just kind of dancing around them. Fortunately, Timber Chain managed to dodge a two-man stun, but the Dusa is being constantly controlled up, unable to get off another round of the Snake. She dies, as does the rest of the T1 cores, or at least maybe, okay, Carl's still out there somewhere, I guess, but it's still not looking great for the Southeast Asian squad of T1. Uh, their, their lack of damage cap, like, you all in on a single core Dusa, mm -hmm. 22 Savage, he did nothing wrong, didn't even have a death until that previous team fight. Uh, in the bottom Radiant Forest, but he simply doesn't do enough damage. Now there's a Butterfly on Ame. All three of these cores are pretty fat. You have a Lesh and a Spectre. There's nothing to say, he's literally running in circles around him in the middle of the fight. Yep. He's not a target anymore. Yes, he is. 3k H... Oh, now the Shard. Good lord. <laughs> It's already hard enough to get any breathing room. <laughs> a lot of these stationary heroes, like the Dusa, that shard is actually good outside of base defense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to your point about the build, uh -huh. this is when I think Letrak looks the best. Because the hero, you've got a couple of concerns. Notably, it's running out of mana or being too squishy. Okay. And this build sort of protects you against both possibilities. and. Just really like no downside. A better synergy as well with your Wyvern. Do you have the Holy Locket? Of course he does. Boots, Windlace, Holy Locket. The new build. New meta. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm not sure who our observer is today, but I saw them click on Faith Beyond looking for the Winter Wyvern because I also thought that was the Winter Wyvern. They look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to JJ, of course, our third man in the cast who's been doing a wonderful job, as have both of our observers. Blink Dagger now up for the Winter Wyvern. So look for an even easier time in playing this game. I mean, why is no pressure on him whatsoever? And now he can play far away and blink in when it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. And I just really enjoy, you know, PSG LGD. You can tell that they prep this. There's a concept that they're going for. Even the veil picked up by Jin Q. Like it, the ags for the DK again, maximizing the damage reduction, even talenting yeah, for it all on the Spectre with mm -hmm. both the health and the regen talent. Smoking on up, the SG LGD invading the triangle might just be able to catch somebody here. They see Zephyr, Zephyr already oh. blinks away, but they see 23 Savage man to get a dragon tail. Plus, immediately the haunt jump in for the Spectre. Look how much oh mana they God. burned away. They changed under, and she doesn't have an opportunity to get off the snake, to get off the stone gates, and now they're going to catch even more. Timbersaw underneath his own tier three, fearing for his life, trying to get away. They're gonna use the overgrowth to be able to save him. Oh, the winner's curse denies the lasso pullback once again. Carl just cannot separate LGD from each other. They are playing together as a squad, as a team, and they will take game one in victory here. Unbelievable. I mean, not much to say about this one. PSG LGD just near perfection.